I think I'm live. I think I'm live. I'm gonna give it a few few minutes. I've been trying to go live. I think I I think I've I think I got it this time. There it is. Yes, I have it this time. Finally. Finally, I've been trying to do this thing here. So give me a few minutes and get this going. <laughs> Somebody, no, I'm not playing. The person who asked me in my plan, I'm just, I was just trying, trying to get this thing going, and I was having a few problems getting started. I had to change apps. I, I like to use a screen sharing app, and I was having problems with the screen share app that I used to use. So I had to switch to a whole nother app, and it was giving me problems. But I think I got it this time. So here we go. We're going to talk about this interview. Um, Give me just a few minutes. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna discuss this interview, y'all. And y'all can give me what y'all impression of it is. And I'm gonna give what my impression of it is. And uh we're gonna just tr try to try to do this thing. <laughs> Ask me what I plan. So let me tell a few people that I'm live that I that I told them I was gonna do a recap. This is gonna be a recap. And I hope it's not a problem. I hope this is not a problem that I'm doing this recap. Um, and I will see this chat in just a minute. Just give me just a few minutes. Okay. All right. Let me make sure my volume is down here. Okay. Hey, Nate. Thank you for coming in. Can you hear me okay, Nate? Is the volume okay? Because I'm using a whole new uh, app. And I don't like this whole new app I'm using, but just for for this for this purpose, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with it because if I don't go ahead and talk about this, I will forget everything that I just heard in the interview that I just watched uh, just probably one hour ago. So I'm gonna have to uh, use this app that I'm using and and, and make it work because I I did want to talk about this briefly. So you can't hear me. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started and everybody else can just catch the replay. So today Tasha K did a an interview with um did an interview with Eddie Long's son, um uh, which is Eddie Long Jr. What is this popping up here? I'm going to have to figure out what's popping up at the top of my screen cuz I don't know what that is. Okay. So so she did an interview with with um Eddie Long Jr. and now I'm a I'm gonna just be straight out honest. I don't follow a lot of stuff. Even I follow church gossip if it's put in my face, like if 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 uh, Sir William is talking about it or King Jobs is talking about it. But I'm not one that go search it out, and I'm not one that follow it follow it in details. So I do remember, of course, the whole thing uh that came about with eddie long and the young men accusing him of in a, of an inappropriate late relationship with him but i'm going to tell y'all straight off the bat i don't recall details i didn't go searching out details i didn't look up details i just heard a lot of rumors like everybody else so okay so tasha k did this interview with eddie long jr and when i saw the promos i said of course i'm going to watch that uh, I, I am interested in how a child of a preacher, a bishop, a well-known bishop, um, get all these rumors about this person. How, what's their take? What did they feel? Um, you know, so I was interested in, in watching it, you know, definitely, you know, so uh, I'll watch it by replay today. Now, the first thing that I learned in this interview was that he reached out to her. However, Tasha K liked his father, Eddie Long Sr. Um, let me see. 
What is that? Okay. That's okay. I see. I understand now what's popping up at the top. It's y'all saying hello and y'all coming in the room. Thank you for coming in. Uh, outrageous or outrage contentment. Thank you for coming in, World Smith. So I'm not going to interact with the, the chat. We, yes, I am. Yes, I am. But y'all let me get a few things out because again, I'm working with a new app and it, it's thrown me off. So I'm going to try to get out my notes and interact with y'all and see what y'all think. Okay. So the first thing, like I said, I learned was that uh, he reached out to Tasha K to do this interview. Um, and she had to find a place to put him on the schedule. That's the first thing. Second thing is Tasha K liked his father, Eddie Long. She said during a dark time of her life, uh, she had cassette tapes and she listened to some of his teachings and his preaching and it really helped her. So I think that, that was important in how this whole interview was conducted in the conversation that they had later on in the interview, we find out that, that they live close by. She kept saying, you live up the street from me. So I'm assuming that, uh, Eddie Long Jr. lives in her neighborhood. And, and, and so they may know each other. So y'all hit that like button for me. I appreciate it. Um, so, and again, I took notes, so I'm trying to go by my notes. Um, According to Tasha K, so the interview, well, let me just say this. According to Tasha K, the boys admitted it didn't happen. And I haven't seen this video, but she says there's some video out there where he they admitted that it didn't happen. But I'm like, is it? Because the accuser, uh, and I think his name is Spencer Legrand, and y'all can correct me. Listen, y'all, I don't mind being corrected because I'm terrible with names. Okay, so if y'all need to correct me, please do. In the replay, in the comments, please do. But I think one of the accusers' name is Spencer Legrand. He's recently been talking about this. In 2018, he wrote a book. And it's, I think somewhere around May 2021, he spoke about this again. So I can't imagine that they said at some point that nothing happened, as Tasha K said. And another thing, uh, Tasha K kept saying throughout this conversation, I'm going to call this interview a conversation rather than a interview because to me it was more of a conversation but she kept saying it was a setup that it was set up by some community she she, she said that a few times did any of y'all that's in here watch this interview by chance it's not okay okay but uh let me make sure i'm getting all of the chat but she kept saying it was a was a, a setup which was so confusing to me i'm like set up by who and why who set them up and why did they set them up? Okay. So before I get to rambling and get back to my notes, I started not to do this at all, y'all, but I'm going to go with it. So y'all, here it is. She said that his, um, Tasha, she being Tasha K, she said that the, that the accusations against uh, Bishop Eddie Longs was never verified. There was no receipts. There was no proof that it actually happened. Um, and she compared it to Dwayne, Dwight Dawkins. Oh, was his name Dwayne or Dwight? I think his name was Dwayne. Y'all know the, the, the guy in Florida who, who the video went viral with him and another gay man. He's having sex with a gay man and he was on the only fans and it's went across Twitter and, and Larry Reed showed it, showed it on his Patreon. She said, unlike with Dwayne Dawkins, I think his name is there was no verification of proof that these that these things actually happened. Let me see what y'all saying. Uh, uh, out, outrage, contentment. Said, I did not. Tasha is notorious for... Uh, you would be using some words that I got to figure out. Disseminating information or misinformation and brags about it. Okay. Earl Smith says, yes, I saw the interview and I thought it was very interesting. Okay. You thought it was interesting. Okay. Um, okay. Eddie Long's, uh, so, so basically I think that the purpose of this interview in this first picture I showed in the beginning of the interview, he gave her a gift for Cinco de Mayo. Uh, and the gift was this real nice bottle of tequila, uh, the glasses to drink the bottle of tequila and even the lime that goes along with those of you who drink. Know that if you're doing shops with tequila, you need your little lime, your salt, and whatever you use. So he presented her with that gift, and that's what that picture is. Um, 
But in my opinion, the whole interview was really the purpose of of um, Eddie Long Jr., which I'm going to call him Edward because it seems that that's the name that he goes by, which is Edward. It seems like Edward, Eddie Long Jr., his purpose of contacting Tasha K to do this interview was for the for, for the purpose of, of uh, promoting his book. In my opinion, he did this to promote his book. And in explaining why he wrote the book, he did say that, and this and this is information that y'all may know, but I don't know because again, like I said in the beginning, I don't follow a lot of celebrity news. And even with church gossip, I don't follow it as close as y'all may think that I do. I just don't. So in it, he said that he, uh, the church, when his after his father died, the, the church, New Birth, did not honor his contract. Because at the church, he was a youth, min youth minister and he was also a musician at the church, a, play, a paid employee. But he said that after his father died, the church did not uh, honor his contract with the church. Basically, he was fired. He was fired. So he, he is no longer a member of the church. Let me see what y'all saying in the ch chat. Um, I think it was, I think he had that, that mm -hmm. I think that had the allegations gone to court, it would have required the accusers to provide proof. However, his settlement to the victims uh, precluded a court case. I wish I was on StreamYard so I can get outraged contentment up here. Um, yeah, so they did settle, you know, it, it never went to court. They did a settlement. Which was meant, which was briefly mentioned in this interview. Now I find it interesting. Now y'all already know a lot of people went to look at this interview in hopes or assuming that they was going to discuss all the allegations. Like the reason why I wanted to watch this interview is was because I wanted to see the son's reaction to the allegations, what he felt, how it affected his life, things like that. I, I wasn't I didn't even know there was a book that he was doing this interview to promote his book. I didn't know that until I started watching it. So 26 minutes in, I could tell that this was not going to be really be about Eddie Long, but more about pushing Junior's book. I, I, I picked that up 26 minutes in of them talking back and forth. I said, mm, we're not going to get very much of what we came for. Uh, they were discussing life and growing and friendships and relationships. Guy, they got into how you know how you should rank your friends based on you know when you was going through how they was there for you, and they was really talking about stuff like that. And it seems like um, Tasha was doing more talking about herself. Then interviewing him. That's why I said to me it was more of a conversation than an interview. Um, to me. Um, and there was a few times when I almost stopped listening. There was a few times when I wanted to red ball past some stuff and, and wait on them to get to the get to. Because I just felt like they weren't getting to it. There was a few times when I almost fell asleep even. So y'all can tell me whether that was y'all reaction. Maybe that was just me. Um, like I said, you know, that was just my reaction coming from it because going in, I thought it was going to be, he was going to talk about, he was going to go back 10 years and talk about the day that he learned about the accusations against his father. Did I think that he was going to necessarily, uh, uh believe it or anything like that? Probably not because that's his dad. But I, you know, but anyway, they were discussing growing up relationship, friendships, how they feel like they're there for a lot of people. But when it comes down to it, a lot of people are not down uh, or are not with them. Uh, Tasha K even shared a letter that he, she said she just wrote to her father last night. So it was like a conversation between them that all of us was just kind of sitting there watching. Now, the chat was probably the most interesting part of the whole live the chat was roasting y'all the chat was talking about what's going on here what are y'all talking about let's get into it you know they was and tasha wasn't reading the chat wasn't paying any attention to the chat and neither was he because in that chat they were so shady and they was asking him questions and i will say this whatever your parents do 
it's not the children's, it's not the child's fault. It's not the child's fault what the parents do. So it seems like they wanted him to get into, you know, they were like, you know, what do you think about your father? And he did this and he did that. But again, he wasn't watching the, the, the chat and neither and, and, and Tasha K wasn't watching. They was having a conversation and just letting us uh, watch that conversation. But they were roasting them. They wanted an interview more similar to the one that he did with Larry Reed. Now, I did not watch the interview with Larry Reed, but it seems like Larry Reed was asking him more of the questions that the people wanted to see him answer. But she was not. And the people were saying, you know, well, you know, Larry Reed did it this way and he didn't answer the questions and things like that. Let me see what y'all saying in the chat. I agree with World Smith. He's uh World Smith. Her interview showed that she has no journalistic uh education and she isn't a good interviewer and doesn't do well being interviewed. Uh World Smith said, and she was definitely talking about her Minty Storm Monroe. Yeah, yeah, it seems like she was throwing a little shade that she was kind of, you know, again, you know, Tasha's been on this whole, you know, friends not supporting people for a while. I don't really watch her. I'm subscribed to her. I watch her periodically, but I don't watch her loyally. But from what I've seen, like videos she's done in her closet, it do seems like she's throwing little shots, but I don't know. I could be wrong. Let me see. Chainbreaker says Tasha was def defending Eddie Sr., and down in the victims. I agree. I definitely agree. I, I definitely agree. Um, and, and, and the chat was, was going off. Like I said before. Um, 35 minutes in. And the chat is getting restless. Y'all. I'm talking about 35 minutes into the chat. You know I can understand small talk. You present the guild. You know you how you doing you do a little you know small talk but it's 35 minutes in and they're still not saying nothing they're saying a whole lot of words they're doing a whole lot of talking but it seems like they're saying nothing there it's just circles 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 um the chat was feeling like they ain't getting what they came for this is not what we came for we didn't come for our insp inspirational message about you know who's your friend and who's not your friend you know all that is, is fine and good and y'all are obviously encouraging each other but the chat is like hey hey we're here we came to see this and you're not giving us what we want and again anybody who disagrees with me i welcome i ask for you to disagree because that makes it for makes for a better conversation even in the replay i don't mind as long as you're being disrespectful as long as you're being respectful and not being disrespectful i do not mind so Tasha said the book was personal and will answer questions, but it's not addressing the haters. So I'm looking at this book. So I'm kind of looking at this look this book a little bit, and I'm like, couldn't be much in that little book. And it, and I'm not being a hater here, y'all. I'm not being trying to be negative, but I'm like, it couldn't be much in that little book as I'm looking at the book as he keep referring back to the book and. He was very good at, you know, bringing, shifting it back to the book and reminding the people, hey, look, I'm here to sell this book. I'm here to sell this book. Let me see what y'all saying in, in the, in the um, chat. Talking about words to prove and he had no clothes on. Mm -hmm. But remember her crucifying Eddie at, the, at that time. Senior, I was wondering because she had like she never said anything about it. Like she was just with him. She liked him. He encouraged her. Um. Outrage contentment says there must have been enough proof because Eddie Senior paid the victims off. That's that's a that's a good argument. I mean, there definitely for me, for me, when I heard the whole story, I said, why would he pick out these particular young men? His he had a church full. I mean, that church was a mega, still is a mega church. Why these boys? Why these particular boys? And he's taking them on vacation and he's doing things with them alone. You know, were there other boys or were there other people? You know, why these? Where was the youth pastor? Yeah, so yeah, that was kind of uh chain breaking and outrage. Contentment is talking, y'all. So if you're catching the replay, please make sure you wait till the um the chat is uploaded. Uh, cause they're, they're making very good points and have a very interesting conversation. Chain break, 
chain breaker. Obviously, Eddie Sr. didn't want the case to go to court. Yeah, they, you know, they wanted to keep it out of court and there was a payoff. I did. I still don't get the purpose of the book. Let me go back to my notes. Let me go back to my notes. Did they say a purpose of the book? So, again, uh, Tasha K obviously had read the book, even though he presented her with the book. But she said she had already read the book and she said it was personal and will answer some questions, but it's not addressing the haters. So as I'm now, I had lear actually learned a lot of things in this because I didn't even know how many children uh, Eddie Long had or any of that stuff. Uh, so I learned around the 38 minute mark that the son, Edward, which is Eddie Long Jr., was by his first wife, Deborah S. Houston. That's her name. It's uh, Deborah. Deborah S. Houston. That's Eddie Long's ex-wife. Um, he was married to her from 1981 through 1985. And you'll hear me calling him Edward or Eddie Jr. Because it seems that he goes by Edward. And so, and then Eddie Jr., he's a minister of music, like I said before, a minister of music. And he was the youth pastor at New Birth. And I think after they let him go, I think he started doing some stuff on radio and continued doing his music. So, and like I said before, this was more of a conversation than an interview. And, it, and at some point, it seemed like he was interviewing her because he was asking her questions. And he's, he was really good at not really talking about the things that he did not want to talk about and moving the conversation back to his book. And when she was discussing his book a little bit, very little, she said, well, I don't want to give it away, um, give it away, you know, uh, give too much. But they did give away enough of the book to let us know that it really don't talk about the allegations. They do give away enough. They In the interview or in this conversation, they gave away enough to let us know that there's nothing in the book that really gets in detail or really talks about the allegations. Now, that was something revealed by them and not by me in this in this live. Let me see what y'all saying in the back, in the chat, excuse me. Uh, Chainbreaker said there was someone in the chat who was, a, who was friends with the young men and she was incensed. Listen, the chat was the best part. The only thing that kept me there for the full one hour and nearly 40 minutes was the chat. If it wasn't for the chat, I wouldn't have watched. I would have watched 15 minutes and stopped. I would have watched maybe 25 minutes and definitely stop. Um, Andrew Carr, thank you for coming in, uh, says uh, Tasha has, be has begun doing interviews for free, meaning when people want to improve their image, they've been um, coming to her. Uh, she's, she's perturbed with Larry Reed about the video Conscious did last night. Interesting. For, uh, for example, she flip-flopped on R. Kelly issue the way she tries to dis discredit Nicki Minaj, husband, victim, etc. You know, I, I I guess I'm beginning to understand why people don't care much for Tasha K. You know, I, I don't have a feeling about her one way or the other, but it's becoming apparent why people are beginning to feel some kind of way about Tasha K. And and I will say, in my opinion, this was not at all a good a good um, interview. Like I said over and over, the, the Best thing about it was the chat. The chat was going off and going in. Um, way the chat was way more interesting than the conversation they was having. At one part, do y'all remember the part where they started? They started in on porn. So Tasha K said that she's going through this thing now. Like I said, it was more Tasha K talking about herself than than, than this young man. But at one point, Tasha K said that um, that her daughter, the sixteen, is wanting to date. And she was saying that with her in her decision making or whether she's going to let her daughter date or not, she think about herself and how strict they was. They were her family was on her and how they wouldn't allow her to date. And it caused her to sneak out and do things. And some, somehow from there, they started talking about sex and porn and children walking, watching porn. And he was talking about as a preacher kid, you know, how some of the things they used to do on the church bus, and I'm not going to go into detail, but it involved fingers and smelling. And I'm like, where, 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 where are we going? Where are we going? And I'm going to tell you something else that was interesting about this interview. 
Oh, Lord. Our outrage contentment says, it's about time you started seeing her for her ways, Cruiser. I told you she isn't a good person. Listen, listen, I don't know that lady. <laughs> you know what I said. I don't know that lady. <laughs> it's in my funky Doniva voice. Andrew Carr says, I think she's hiring herself out. She also did this with T.I. And she's all of a sudden, uh, she's a hard four. He and Tiny and Drags, they're accusers. Interesting. So what was, oh yeah, did y'all see the part where they started talking about sex and porn and I was like, what? wait a minute. Now this is the other interesting thing. Now I don't have a problem with this, but I know some of the church folks are going to say this. He is still yet a minister. He talked about the Bible and gave Bible references and teachings all throughout this. So he's a minister, minister of music and he was a youth pastor. So in, in that capacity. He's a believer. He's a Christian. I found it interesting that Tasha didn't tone down any of her cussing. Now, let me say this. I don't have no issues with cussing. I don't think cussing is going to keep you out of heaven. I don't. But we know traditionally church folk, religion, they think cussing is bad. And I found it interesting that she she's interviewing a minister and I'm sure she had to okay this with him before and there she poured him some wine and she's sucking down the wine like she always do but he did go to you know a, a blogger who who's known in her chat is called the wino so he knew where he was going he know he know Tasha K uh obviously they've been knowing each other for a while but I just found it interesting that she was you know it's like you it, I, I know some people even on radio you like uh for example Ricky Smiley when um Tom Joyner uh show was going on they changed up how they did things when they interviewed preachers or people clergy people of the cloth preachers ministers whatever Tasha K did not at all <laughs> at all <laughs> you know not that I felt like she had to that that's just something I found very interesting um Andrew Carr, she is going to interview T.I. after all the stuff that she said about him. Oh, outrage, contentment. Listen, if y'all watch this live, please. I think that more than what I'm saying, my chat is more interesting than what I'm saying. Just like the chat in Tasha K's live was more interesting than that conversation they were having. He, Yeah, he was very comfortable with it. He was okay with it. He was cool with it. He was very comfortable with it. But here's the thing. He said that how he found out about his father was that he was sitting in a, 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 in a at a bar. And listen, y'all, I have no problem with ministers drinking. I'm just trying to talk about this from from the traditional way of most church folk. I don't have no problem with ministers drink. Listen, I may go down to to, to down to the, to the lounge tonight and have me one, two, three, or four. So, you know, I don't have a problem with Christians drinking. But he said when, when this whole thing broke, he was down at the bar. He was sitting down at the bar and his daddy called him. Bishop Eddie Long calls him and said, look, son, I'm going to meet with you later. We're going to talk about this later. But you're about to see some things that we're going to have to discuss later. And he said after he got the phone with his dad, two minutes later, it comes across that, that you know, the accusations and everything that's going on comes on the TV screen, I guess, at the bar. He said that, let me get this name right because I got it wrong earlier when I was talking to a friend. He said that John Gray, the bar that he was in, John Gray stayed in the penthouse or above this bar and that he had a and he's a carrier and, and, and that that's nothing new that he carries a gun because most of us in the south have a gun including myself i call her nina you know that he was going to go out to his car because he knew where most of the accusers live or whoever was talking about this and it's like you're going and somebody in the chat said you were going to kill the folk Y'all, the chat was everything. Let me see what y'all saying in the chat. Speaking of, hey, views of you. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, yeah, he was he was at the bar, which again, I don't have no problem with being at the bar. But you know, I know some of some of you church folks don't don't think that, that we Christians should be down at the bar. But that's where he was. Uh, let me see. Uh, outrage, contentment. She's been after. 
she's been going after those vict victims for several months did uh the uh the same thing with wendy she reported everything about her um it's his practice though okay i'm reading what y'all saying in the chat <laughs> listen outrage contentment don't like this lady y'all she said i just don't like her i don't like that lady she brags about uh uh information that she knows isn't true that's wrong no judgment but ain't john gray the one going through marital counseling and cheating on his wife yeah and they got into that because tasha k did this whole thing on john gray she said she called the, the wife of john gray and said i'm about to do this i'm about to i'm about to you know, talk about I'm about to do a live on your husband. And she said that John Gray's wife said, you know, in her words, she said that his wife said, do that shit. <laughs> I was like, you know, John Gray wife ain't say that to you. Y'all got, I'm, a, I'm out around here knocking over stuff. You know, John Gray wife ain't say, tell you do that shit. <laughs> but I laughed when she said it. And John Gray and this guy are friends. I think John Gray might have been in his wedding. He said he was the one who came down there and stopped him, and put his hand on his shoulder, and he said, "I'm." And, and Edward, Edward, Eddie Jr. said, "I'm going. I know where the people live." And John Gray told him, "You ain't going nowhere," and stopped him from going out. People always say they were gonna go do something. You know, I, I'm gonna think that he wasn't gonna go do anything to the to these boys. But hey, uh, Miss B Town Hester, thank you for coming in. Um, yeah. This, Listen, this interview was, or, or or as I said before, this conversation, it was, it had some parts in it that kind of woke me up, but some of it was boring. But when he was talking about, you know, John Gray had to stop him from going to shoot for, I'm like, what? What? And that whole, they was talking about sex and porn, and he used to steal his aunt's porn and look at the porn and the things that he said that they did on the bus on the way to youth me. Y'all know, y'all, those of y'all, uh, those of you who was raised in church know about you sat and going to youth convention and, and, and going different places and you know things happen but for him to say it out like that and he was a youth minister which to me was just a little weird the way that whole conversation went i was like mm, you may not want to do that but anyway so finally after nearly an hour it was 58 minutes exact tasha finally asked him about the allegations they finally was going to discuss the controversy with his dad. I thought. I thought. But they didn't. That's when he starts talking about he was at the hotel and how he felt. And that's when Tasha gives it away that he does not go into it at all in his book. Which, I'm, since I'm doing this live, I'm going to show y'all the book. And there is the book. There it is. Okay. And he also reveals that he's no longer with new birth. I, some of this stuff I didn't know. Y'all may have not may have known, but I didn't know. And it seems like none of his siblings are with new birth. Did the wife, Vanessa Long, did she leave new birth too? Y'all have to tell me because they were talking about maybe later on, maybe at some point the family will be reunited with new birth and go back to new birth. But, uh, you know, as of now, they don't go there. Let's see what y'all saying in beauty. Hey, beauty Dior. Hello, Cruiser. That's how that's how Daddy is say my name, y'all. The cousin pastor. He said Cruiser. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, what was I saying? Thank you so much for coming in, uh, Chainbreaker. Appreciate you coming in the conversation. Um, let me finish out my notes so I can finish this thing because it's getting pretty late, and I meant for this to be uh quick. But again, y'all. They were saying a whole lot of words and, and talking about absolutely nothing. They were talking in circles. They were saying some inside stuff like, you know who, that guy, yeah, that person. It's like, who? Tell the rest of us. <laughs> you know, it's, it's saying inside stuff. This, this conversation, this interview, in my opinion, was just bad. Um, somebody said that his interview with Larry Reed was kind of the same. Uh, Larry Reed would ask him questions and he was taking over the interview when he really wasn't answering the questions and he really didn't want to talk about, you know, any of the thing that Larry wanted to talk about. Um, around one hour, one, around, around the one hour, eight minute mark, he says he knows stuff about the other ministers 
who was talking about his dad. He dropped that. He kind of said, well, you know, I know some things, you know, all these ministers and stuff that was talking about him then and still talking about him now. I know some stuff that they doing. You know, I, I know what they're doing. Hmm. Then he goes on to say, and I found this interesting because I want to know who the heck he was talking about. He said that even some of the people, the radio people, uh, even some of the radio people that talked about his dad, he knows some stuff about them and they were mentors to his dad and they was making jokes on the radio and doing skits and comedians was doing skits on his dad. And he was, you know, of course that would have make me upset also, but I wanted to know who this radio folk was that he was referring to. But anyway, um, he, he did say that he knew the accusers and he knew the accusers very well, which makes sense. They gone to the same church. They was around his dad that he knew them very well. And they spent nights at his house. Now there was somebody in the chat who said, who gave one of the accusers name. They said Spencer's name. They said, Hey, you and Spencer were friends. Of course you knew him. You and Spencer were friends, but he, he didn't mention it. Um, in my notes, I got the chat is where it is. Let me tell y'all, if y'all watch this interview, watch it for the chat. Because the chat was where it is. Uh, and like I said, they were, you know, giving the information and saying different things that I didn't know. So there was a lot of information in more information in the chat than it was there. Um, <laughs> Andrew Carr said, Larry is for sale to the highest bidder. Well... <laughs> Y'all, <laughs> let me tell you, whenever you, whenever, whenever there's a lie, the best part is always the chat. Let me finish my notes here so I can get on off here and, and, and loose y'all and let y'all go because I feel like I'm rambling. But if anybody tell me in my comments, I am rambling. Y'all know I'm going to go off on you. Y'all know I just had to get old Daryl, whatever his name is, straighten out. Don't be coming to my comments saying some old crazy stuff. I don't mind you disagreeing. But what you ain't going to do is say some old crazy stuff to Miss Cruz. Okay. All right. Anyway, um. Uh, um, and it, I told y'all that he said he had to endure comedians using his dad as their whole routine when they did stand up as a skit. Um, and he said radio hosts talking about his dad using his dad for comedy. He said radio hosts that, uh, he said that his dad had mentored and they, you know, pretty much turned on his dad. Now they started talking about the pictures. Y'all remember the pictures that the young men were saying that was sent to their phone from Eddie and, and Eddie Long, Bishop Eddie Long, I should be respectful still. Bishop Eddie Long, you know how he used to wear them tight shirts to preach, y'all. He's wearing them tight, 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 tight shirts to preach. But he would send them pictures of himself or allegedly after his workout. Well, Tasha K and Edward, Edward Jr., Eddie Jr. was saying, oh, he didn't send the pictures. Now, y'all remember at the very beginning of this video, I said that they kept saying it was a setup, that it never happened, that he was set up by some group. And so they were saying he didn't send the pictures to those boys' phone. He didn't, the Eddie, Bishop Eddie Long never sent the pictures. They were taken. And I was like, well, take it. How did they get out of Bishop Eddie Long's phone? Who took the pictures? And how did they get to these young men? But they never did explain that. Who took the pictures and how did they get to the young man's phone? I guess that was a whole part of the setup that we don't know about. Somebody in the comments said that the book is thin as a slice of bread. They said the book is thin as a slice of bread. <laughs> Basically, it's a pamphlet. And even Tasha K said, well, uh, the book wasn't very long. I need more. I need more. You know, so she basically said the book was uh, uh was 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 the end too, and at the end, Tasha K started trashing, trash talking the accusers. She started saying that the boys didn't come for it, come come from nothing, um, they didn't come from good families, and she, you know, she act like that was, you know, you you don't you. I mean, I don't know whether that was true or not, but you don't pick your parents and you know how it's tried to say, you know, that Eddie Long tried to show them a better way. Why these particular young men though, all the people in your church, these couldn't be the only young men who may have come from 
what Tasha K was trying to say is poverty and maybe some troubled homes. So why you pick these young boys to quote unquote mentor? But Tasha K really started trashing these boys and she started saying that, oh, they're they ain't got no money. They ain't doing anything now. I mean, she was really, really trying to discredit these guys. And I, I thought that was I thought that was awful. I thought it was awful. And and again, a lot of throughout throughout the, the this interview conversation, I was saying, I, I understand why people don't like Tasha K. Now I understand why people don't like Tasha K. Because she really started trashing them young men. Now this, like I said earlier, this is one of the accusers. And he wrote a book, I think in 2018. And he did something else that I haven't had time to really read and research. But he did something else May of 2021. And in the chat, they were saying that he had a Facebook page and he's very vocal now. So y'all can go check him out. His name is uh, Spencer Legrand. I think if I was... To buy a book, I would buy Spencer Legrand's book and not Eddie Long Jr.'s book. That's kind of where I stand with this. I would buy his book, but not Junior's book. So that's my recap. And those are my thoughts about this whole interview, and you know, that I was looking forward to watching, but I found myself being extremely, extremely disappointed in. So that's it. I appreciate all of y'all coming um, and checking out my video. Y'all know I don't go live that often and I don't talk especially about this stuff. I go live about old William, but about this stuff. So I appreciate y'all. 27 people. I hope y'all hit that like button. Y'all go and hit that like button. And in the replay, if you can hit the like button for me. And again, feel free to drop down in the comments in the replay and let me know what you thought about it. Maybe you enjoyed the interview. Maybe you thought the interview was great, you know. Um, if you did, I would like to hear your take on it. Uh, somebody is telling me in my DMs that I should have watched Larry Reed's interview and then compared compared to interviews Larry Reed had more had Larry Reed had to move after that. Oh, he had to move. Y'all be getting some tea in, in my in my DMs. Larry Reed had to move after that interview. Oh God. Well, anyway. That, the person in my DMs, I wasn't going to watch Larry Reed. Watch, I would listen. I, I I just don't get into it all like that. I will let y'all have a discussion about it in the replay. Y'all in in the comments, y'all can tell me what y'all think. Y'all can you know correct me and add more stuff to it. This is probably as deep as I'm going to dive into that. So anyway, this is Miss Cruiser too. Please like, share, and subscribe. Okay, now I don't know how to stop this thing, y'all. <laughs>